Hello and welcome back to the Ride Right Waxing Workshop. Today we're going to be doing my five top tips to get your gear ready for the forthcoming season. Let's take a look. Okay, so uh, let's get back into it. First tip of the day would be this one here. This is a ski lockable device. Um, you can lock your snowboard, your skis to a um, object on the, on the mountain. So if you go and have a meal somewhere, you go to a pub, a bar, there is always ski racks and snowboard racks. Um, what this does is adds a deterrent. It's not a solely secure system, um, but what it will do, it will just stop anybody walking off with your items um, that you've worked very hard for to buy. Now, the snowboards and skis and bindings are not cheap nowadays. Um, they can vary anything up for £300, £200, all the way up to thousands of pounds. So um, what this does, I've used many of these and I've broken many of these. Um, but what it does do, it actually does add as a deterrent. If your board or skis are sat there outside a pub, somebody comes out, accidentally clicks into the um, wrong set of skis or picks your board up and walks off with it because it's got the same top colour, it's the same make, it's the same model. You come out and if you've got step-on bindings, you walk out and you realise you have strap bindings. Not so much for a problem for you because you can strap in, but for the person that's walked off with the step-on bindings, they've got an issue. But also you've then ruined your holiday, um, insurance costs, etc. So, quick deterrent. This is a little padlock. They vary from £2 all the way up to around about £20. You can get them branded from Burton to Decay and etc. Uh, Demon do one. This one I simply bought from Millets here in England. Um, it cost me £6. It was in the sale. It's got a four digit rotary lock on it number. Um, so you simply would put your code in that is unique to you. Um, you set that up, that allows you then to pull the core string out. Now, what you would tend to do this is wrap that around either the binding, something that cannot be obviously removed um, or around your uh, binding of your ski. Um, like I said, there's many places you can wrap it. What I wouldn't suggest you do is wrap it around something that can be removed because obviously, uh, and obviously around the top of a post, you need to wrap it around a post, something that obviously won't dislodge. Um, so you simply wrap that straight through, you come, come back in and you click it in, you mess your code up, that there is secured. So that just adds a deterrent for somebody walking off with your belongings. To release that, you'd simply just put your code back in correctly, you release, pull that back through, retract, and pop it in your pocket. It's as simple as that. So yes, if you're out riding this season in 2020, hope you have a great season, but ride right waxing, first top tip. Okay, ride right waxing top tip number two, um, insoles. Big thing is insoles. Um, what I have done over the years is tried many different types of insoles, uh, ones that come with the boots to obviously what we've currently got here, which is a fully heated insole. Now, this is my big top tip, um, making sure your fitment of your boots is spot on. Um, and there's a really good way to tell this. Um, if you put your foot in your boot and you can scrunch your toes up if you were a snowboarder, then there is too much room in the front of your boot. Now you would have already checked the length because obviously you have tried them on and bought them. But if you can crunch your toes up at the end, there is too much room. And I'll come on to how you fix that problem in a second. Um, I had that issue and I had really bad foot fatigue. And by day three, I pretty much my feet were shot. Um, I popped into a little shop in Les Arcs, a gentleman, funny enough, lived for, uh, locally to me uh, from Ilfracum, um, which was uncanny, um, but another story for another day. Uh, he recommended getting some of these. Now these are heat molded, as you can hear, they are rock hard. Um, you have a heel support, you have your arch support, you have a foot support, and this contours the whole of my foot. They cost me about 70, um, 70 pounds, 70 euros, um, but at the time I was thinking, crikey, that's steep, but absolutely worth every single penny. This transformed my riding within minutes of being on the slope. The very first run, I could not believe how much more direct drive, comfort, and effort it took out of my foot to try to control my board. And I know skiers, you have a lot of these already, but making sure the second stage of this conversation um, may come into play about your foot and your, and your toes, um, would recommend getting these. These support your feet massively. Um, basically, Burton, they come with these. Now this is, uh, with a Photon um, step on, this is a um, Impact 3, so it's a quite a high level, high liner, 
uh, inner liner, sorry, um, and they come with obviously your foot molding. It has some plastic around here for support. It's still, as you can see, not the most supportive material in the world and you can still bend it up to there. Um, there's not much structure to the base and there's not much, so much um, arch support. With this one, it is absolutely solid. So there is no flex in that whatsoever. But what I found was, is because I have quite a skinny foot, I needed to lift my foot in the boot to stop my toes from curling. Now, if you're a skier, I know this can happen in ski boots. Um, one recommendation that I would suggest is find yourself a flat insole, very much like this one. This is almost pretty much 100% flat. It's got a slight curve to it, which does aid a little bit more support. Take your inner liner out of your boot uh, itself Get your boot, this is a Burton boot. It's got the silver reflective warmth um, technology on the bottom, which keeps the heat into your foot, which is excellent Burton, so thank you for that. Um, get your very flat, mundane, take it out of an old pair of trainers. So you simply just stick that in the bottom of the boot. What you're actually doing is bringing the level of that boot up. You then get your liner, you stick that in, over the top, make it sure it's down nice and tight. You then get your new fiberglass resin cast heat molded insole and you put that in. That makes a huge difference, I cannot tell you. So one thing I would recommend you do, and this leads me on to my ride right waxing top tip number three, would be get your boots fitted properly. Get them out of the garage, get them out of the loft. Um, and basically get the insole out, put your foot in it and just see if you've got that toe lift. And if you have, pop yourself down to Snow and Rock, pop yourself down to the local running centre, get yourself some moulded insoles. Um, if not, wait till you go out on the mountain. First day in resort normally is always a quiet day because it's changeover day. You don't normally would ski that first day. You're in getting your gear, pop in, get yourself some heat lined mouldings. Um, they will transform the way that you ride, they will transform your holiday, and it will really, really make all the difference to how your feet feel. Thank you very much. Okay, right, top tip number three is boots. We've spoke about making sure that they fit okay with your foot inside with the linings from top tip number two. Number three is get these boots on your feet as quickly as possible. Dig them out of the garage, the loft, the shed, underneath the stairs. Get them out, make sure that the boots are okay, make sure the bindings fit properly, make sure everything's clicking in properly, make sure the heel is okay, especially if it's ski boots, making sure the front clicks into your binding of your skis okay, make sure that there's no tears, rips, gashes, um, all the straps are working properly. Um, just get them out and have, them, have a really good check over, because nothing worse when you get out into the slopes that your boots aren't functioning properly. They don't fit very, very well. And also, guess what? They're cold and damp, because a lot of people take these boots off at the end of a ski week or two weeks, um, put them away, and they don't see them again for another 12 months, which is normally fine. But if you've got the upper edge, and you, it's like training for a race. Get them out, get yourself a decent set of socks, a fresh brand new set of socks, um, socks, can't say the word, sorry. Um, snowboard socks are different to ski socks. Make sure you get the right socks. Get them in the boot, make sure your toes aren't crimping up. Get them in, make sure the linings are warmed, make sure your feet are conditioned. Um, and another really good top tip within this tip is cut your toenails. It sounds such a simple thing, but cut your toenails, make sure that your toenails are freshly cut, so they're not pushing at the end of the binding. Make sure your feet haven't changed at all. Have you broken a toe in the last 12 months and completely forgot all about it? It's simple things like that. Get your boots on your feet. Walk around your house, your living room, your garden. Make sure your feet are conditioned to them. So when you go out, it's like putting on a pair of slippers on day one. You've got comfort from day one. You know that they fit. You feel happy and secure. And also, it's a placebo effect. It's the confidence that they give you if you know that they're comfy. Nothing worse, that dreaded feeling. Are they going to hurt? Are they going to be uncomfortable? So top tip number three, get your boots out from wherever they're hiding, get your socks on your feet, get them on your feet and walk around with them. Thanks. Okay, rock right, right, waxing top tip number four. We have got a screwdriver. These are a very universal thing, fantastically handy for all skiers, all snowboarders. We have a little cap on the end, which has a little spanner in. We've got all the other fixings. Um, 
and also um, we have a ratchet system which can go clockwise and anti-clockwise. So fantastically handy, ever so lightweight, inexpensive really, and an absolute must. If you're out on the mountain and you've got one of these, if your binding on your ski or your snowboard becomes loose, then guess what? You can tighten it up. But one thing you must make sure that you do is all the bits that come with the actual um, tool itself is make sure you've got the correct ones to fit the correct size screws, be it Torx heads, Phillips heads, flat heads, making sure that the Phillips head, that's the star head, um, is the right size to fit into the hole so you're not rounding off the screw. Um, a really, really, really important tool. I have actually used this quite a lot. I know in most ski stations you've got tools at the bottom and at the top of it. Totally understand that. But if you're caught mid-piece and you've got to ski down with half a binding, you're running the risk of hurting yourself, you're running the risk of endangering somebody else, um, you're running the risk of losing a screw or binding fixing, etc. So then you're uh, into big cost. This will actually save that from happening. And guess what also you can do with it? You can actually help somebody else with it. And I think a great thing within the ski and snowboard fraternity is helping each other. We're kind of a family. Um, it's something like the golfers have. It's that self-respect you have for each other. I'm a great believer of that. Some of you might sit there and totally disagree with that because you hate snowboarders or the skiers hate um, sorry, the snowboarders hate skiers, etc. At the end of the day, we're all out of the mountain to enjoy ourselves. And if somebody's struggling, why not help them out? And this is one tool that can actually do that. So, one other tip that this actually leads me into is making sure when you come back from your weeks of snowboarding, not so much for skiers, this is more for snowboarding, is take your, ski, um, your snowboard um, and just loosen off all four screws. And the reason why I say loosen them off. Um, we always remove, or I always remove these when I'm actually waxing a board, and the reason for that is it causes an indentation just in the bottom of the board here where the binding sits. Because if you do that too tightly, it actually pulls the board base in and actually causes a slight dent in the bottom of the board. So, one thing I would always recommend doing is loosening off these screws to give that board back its shape, not causing a vacuum area um, underneath here. I've had a snowboard that had quite a big indentation and obviously by doing so, actually stopped that uh, from happening. Um, so a big recommendation. Um, I'm off into the garage now to show you what I'll be doing with wrapping the boards. It's a very inexpensive way of doing so. It's kind of like a polythene uh, that I use. Um, I do it to all my customers' skis. It helps in transportation, storage, um, and obviously keeps the skis in tip-top condition for first days on the slopes. Let's take a look. Okay, right, right, waxing tip number five is when you actually uh, book your skis in with myself, um, I always wrap them. This one always has been pre-wrapped with this cellophane. That was a cheap, £2.50 off of eBay. Um, it came about because we use this in my place of work and it actually uh, serves a very good purpose. And the reason for that is I hate ski chatter. So the two skis when they're mounted together, both on the tips and the tails, they move about and they scratch and they basically rough up all the tail ends and the tip ends of the skis. Um, and again, it just imperfects the actual base of the ski, which is pet hate of mine. Um, so what I try to do is protect them. Now, you can buy obviously ski straps like this one, which actually will sit over the ski and wrap around and it will protect the tail. You'd have to fit them to both top and bottom. If now uh, my clients don't have these, then I would always recommend anybody uh, to get some of this. When you get your skis back off the mountain and you're packing them up to come home or um, you're putting them away or if you've come with me, then obviously this is how you'll get them back. Is get yourself some of this and just basically do this. It's ever so simple. And what it does do, it just helps protect the ski. It's just a couple of quick passes on the tail, like so. Quick pass on the tip. Like so, and then we come up. Turn the ski, and just to hold that in place, we go around just one more time. Quite nice though, also for for you to unwrap your skis when you get to the ski slope um, on the first day, know that your skis are in tip top condition. We just put that across the middle, it's as simple as that. What I will do though, just to aid the customer, make sure they get their item back, is we're going to put this on the ski as well, and then we're going to take the top ski, and this is where this uh, cellophane comes in fantastically well. We're going to lock the two skis together like you would normally with the brakes, 
I'm just going to sit them down together, like so. We'll put the gentleman's strap around the ski, like that. And then what I do is do one quick pass around the tail, one quick pass around the top. Now, even with that strap not on, um, it can start very loosely if I were just to unstrap it a second so it's loose in the ski. Great thing with this is you can hold it either side of the binding and the ski is not moving. And the benefit of that is when you're in transit, as you notice, obviously all your skis and your ski bags, etc. Like if you go on holiday, they always get chucked about at the airport. And obviously these skis aren't cheap and they're in a bag normally um, with your ski poles and they're getting tossed and turned around and obviously things can get damaged, rails can get damaged. But by doing this and keeping it all in situ, um, it means that it's going to be no extra damage done to your skis. That's unnecessarily um, going to happen to them uh, when obviously in transit. So my top tip, get yourself some cellophane, ever so cheap. Dry your skis when you come off the slopes. Make sure your skis are in tip-top condition and just wrap them up so when in transportation, they don't move. Simple as that. Thanks very much. Okay, my name's Tony from the Ride Right Waxing Workshop. I want to thank you for watching my five top tips of getting your gear ready. Simple things from your padlock, to your liner of your boots, to getting your boots on your feet, to cutting your toenails, screwdriver, ski transportation, protection. Um, all these things I think are invaluable. If there's anything you want me to cover off in any other videos or any other reviews, if you let me know, I'll try and find it. I'll try and review it. I'll try and give you my personal opinion, which is all it is at the end of the day. I thank you for watching. Um, if you'd like to hit that subscribe button, if you'd like to hit that like button, and if you can share my video with others, that'd be fantastic. I'm just really passionate about this uh, winter sport game. Um, I love doing what I do, and uh, I thought I'd give this a go and uh, see how I get on. So uh, thanks for supporting me. Thanks for watching me, and uh, we'll see you soon.